It's one of those properties that was designed to showcase the light and dark side of life. Uh, and we very much believe, from a Mandrake ethos perspective, that the rising of the sun and the birth of a new day is about your personal regeneration. And it's a journey. Every 24 hours you are in a journey. And we would hope that as many people as possible will come and experience that journey with us. So we have designed many areas and many aspects of the hotel to reflect the light and the dark side of life. Because we believe that whilst there's a lot of light and there's a lot of fun that can take place in an environment such as this, we allow ourselves to have a little bit of downtime and experience the slightly darker side of life. Record summer, whilst I appreciate this is only our second year, um, we're well up 25% on the same trade as we had last year. And that figure looks to only increase as we head towards Christmas and into next year. So 2020 and onwards look to be nothing but record breaking years for the Mandrake. And the accommodation is really doing well for us. Um, so we have significant repeat bookings now, year on year. Um, we're up more than I could ever possibly have expected from a bedroom revenue perspective. But we've really got some work to do with food and beverage. Consequently, we're embarking on a new path with our restaurant offering. So we've been in a situation where in the first quarter of this year, um, the revenue that we took in the restaurant um, was overshadowed by more costs to produce the food than we actually got in actually selling the food. Um, which was fine to a certain degree because the profit that came from the bar and the beverage offering pretty much overlapped and, and, and cancelled out the loss that we were making from the restaurant. But we knew earlier on that it wasn't just going to operate as Joppo. Um, it needs to be something truly special. And it really lends itself to an environment where I think we should be chasing a Michelin star. And having been fortunate enough to work in environments that have had stars in the past, um, there's a real opportunity here. So we sat and we talked um, about the South American cuisine that we produce. And we've got a chef that's worked in Michelin star kitchens all over the world. And he's got three chefs working for him at sous chef level who also have worked in Michelin star restaurants all over the world. It just felt like it was set up for it to be the time of this restaurant. So we're embarking on a truly unique opportunity with our kitchen team. Um, and my goal for it to be, you know, one of the first standalone Michelin star South American restaurants in London needs to have a story around it. And as we all know, when, you know, when you're chasing a star, it's not just about the food you put on the plate, it's the story behind it and the reason behind it. Um, and certainly building the chef's knowledge and awareness and reputation um, and, and scope of influence in London is incredibly important. So, you know, my chef's from from New Zealand, fantastic. It's been in the UK now for three or four years, um, but hasn't built necessarily the connections that we need him to build. So we're going to increase his profile by taking him outside of his box altogether. And we're going to send him with our Spanish floor manager to the other side of the world to immerse them into South American culture. And he's going to be flying to Buenos Aires and taking a boat to Montevideo in Uruguay and then heading back to Buenos Aires and flying to Santiago in Chile and then traveling up to Lima in Peru. And in every opportunity we'll be creating a blog, but also experiencing some of the most unique South American restaurants. And across that 14 day trip, he's got 19 dining opportunities in different styles of restaurants. Now, it's very easy for us to Google top restaurants in Santiago and Chile and just send him to those. But we've actually contacted British Consulate um, to get advice from tourism partners over there on the ground as where are those authentic street food restaurants and food markets that he can go to and experience the culture and the food and the kind of environment that we want him to bring back and start to develop and train here with our team. And then when he returns, um, we'll head towards Christmas and as soon as Christmas is, is out of the way, we start planning the next trip where our sous chefs will be sent through to Bolivia and Paraguay and Venezuela to do exactly the same thing. 
So it's not just about flying over there, having a great couple of weeks away and experiencing some fantastic fine dining restaurants that are listed on the world's top 50. It's that plus going over there and hiking up mountains to remote villages to experience what various different tribes are still cooking and producing over there and taking those unique ingredients that they utilize and bringing them back and allowing the rest of our team here to be immersed into that culture. So we've already started tweaking changing our menu already. We've had a couple of fantastic reviews recently and, and an incredible review from the Sunday Times about where we're at. So we were working with um, a gentleman uh, called Gordon Cartwright who's um, who's certainly renowned across the UK from having worked up at Michelin Standard and having been a chef himself and he's advising us really well on our timescales for menu development um, when we should be you know, changing our wine list as well to go in hand in hand with it and you know our chef's time in, Amer in South America will be very much about going and finding some truly remote vineyards and, and tasting it, working out the deals of how we get imported across the UK. If it's not already being imported, what can we do to start that flow of getting it into the UK? So there's a lot of work to be done over the next six months, but we want to be in the situation by next February, March, where we're putting out Michelin class food with Michelin class service. Um, as a hotel, we don't necessarily have um, the swimming pool and the gym and the jacuzzi that many people look for that standard stereotypical spa break. We offer a spiritual well-being service where our spiritual well-being concierge will meet with you and discuss how you're feeling and how you want to feel and then curate a package of treatments whether it be a gong bath or a crystal healing session or meeting with one of our shamans in your personal space of your bedroom to go through various healing ceremonies that we may well be able to offer. Because we believe that starting inside is the most important, important area to make sure you are at your best at all times.